One of the trickiest areas when deciding the right sand that the firm I was working for needed was actually understanding how it all sits together. We often think of storage in terms of um, size. I need 100 gig, two terabytes, five terabytes. And unless we've been working in specific environments such as SQL or Exchange, we're not so much thought about performance. And this is generally because when we had local storage, you would typically have a RAID 5, 6 disks, just standard server stuff. And that would always be sufficient performance to, to carry out that one task, either Exchange or SQL. Certainly in the SMB environment where, you know, the databases weren't terabytes, we weren't data warehousing, applications are simple. Of course, when we start putting this all together onto a single SAN environment, we do need to understand performance. We do need to understand what our overall requirements are. And more importantly, we do need to know how to diagnose performance issues. Um, we will look at the diagnosing much later on once we set up the SAN in, in some videos on performance benchmarking and performance analysis. Right, we talk about performance. There's a lot to think about when we're talking about uh, performance in terms of disk, and we're only talking about disk stuff here. We have to consider IOPS, input outputs per second, block size, latency, transfer rate and random and sequential loads on the disk. What is fundamental to being good at virtualization and SANS is to understand the workload, understand what the requirements are from the different applications, understand how they fit into each of these different categories. Because when you speak to the salespeople for SANS or you look at the stats, they'll always go, oh, a thousand IOPS, 10,000 IOPS, a million IOPS. But what you need to understand is that IOPS is not the be all and end all. Um, IOPS are in fact useless without this additional information because adjusting each of those different requirements can affect, will affect the different numbers of IOPS that the SAN can produce. And you have different workloads. Some will want sequential, but some will need random. Some will need large block sizes and some will need tiny block sizes. And so it's only when you know what all of these different workloads are, can you actually say, right, well, that's what my IOP requirement is at this latency level. Let's quickly go over some of these terms. IOPS are the number of input and output operations per second. And one of the key things to remember when we go for this video is that word seconds. Everything's done in seconds. Seconds is a huge amount of time when it comes to storage. We're only interested in milliseconds. IOPS a number of input and outputs per second. And each one of those IOPS will have a block of data and some additional information which we effectively uh, class as the overhead. So if we have a very large block size, we can take a lot of data with little overhead. But obviously that large data takes a longer amount of time to transfer. If we have much smaller block size, then the overhead data could almost be as much as the block size. So therefore the block size is small, it will transfer very quickly and it can do a lot of these because it can do you know it can transfer a lot faster but the actual amount of data that's getting transferred is not any more because the block size is a lot smaller so in one example we've got large IOPS we can get loads of IOPS through but we're not transferring much data and another example we've got low IOPS but we are transferring more data now the time for this to complete is called latency so the time for the, the computer puts in its request for writing or reading a block of data, an IOP, is classed as latency, and it's in milliseconds. The transfer rate is obviously directly proportionate to the block size and IOP. So the number of IOPs times the block size will effectively give you the transfer rate. Then the last thing to consider is random and sequential. Random is things such as SQL databases, exchange, where you know, bits of data getting written all over the place, sequential, well, that's just like a streaming a file. You start at the beginning and work your way to the end. So this slide is a good example of the difference between random and sequential. When it's sequential, you've got a nice straight long road, beginning to the end, and you can run as fast as you possibly can, and that is the best performance you can possibly get. And an example of this is if you're transferring a large file, or you're streaming your video, or you're playing some music, um, or you're opening up a large graphics file, start at the beginning, stream all the way through, fast as possible, that's a sequential access. Now if you took the same runner, same speed, 
but asked him to get from beginning to end, same distance, but having to go through a maze where he's constantly having to turn left and turn right and go back on himself, etc. Not be able to accelerate to the same speed you'll get with sequential. And this is effectively what random is. A random is you're going from one part of the disc to another part of the disc and back again. And this is typical of workloads such as an exchange server or a SQL server, where it's having to gain pages of, we call it pages of information from the disk up into memory. And these workloads by nature have to be random because you don't know where on the disk you want that small piece of information from. So going back to SANs, when we are benchmarking a SAN, we can get very different performance um, statistics from copying a big sequential fast file to doing lots of little random files. And that's why we need to know what our workload is when we're comparing it to the benchmark of the sound we're looking to purchase. So then we talk about block size. This is an example of block sizes. In this slide, we've got our lorry's got a large back and obviously can take a large amount of data. And then we've got our sports car, which obviously only got a small boot and can, we can only get a little bit of data in there each time. And what we're gonna say is each trip from right to left is the data being transferred to the disk and back again. And we're gonna call this one IOP. Now the question is, what do we prefer? What's gonna be quicker? What's gonna get our data there faster? Well, let's have a look. So we've got our sports car, which is hurtling along far faster. It's doing much more IOPS, many more IOPS. But what we can actually see in terms of getting the overall file, the track has managed to do that in a much faster time. So which is the better? What would we want? Well, this is all dependent on what we're actually doing. If we are streaming a large file or we're downloading a file or we're copying something, we know we're gonna to have to wait a couple of seconds. And actually, using a large block size um, and moving those chunks in, in much bigger block sizes is absolutely fine. But there is less IOPS. If we're using such as something such as Skype or some kind of voice over IP, actually voice is a very small amount of data, but we need it to get there quick because we don't want the other end having to wait a second for our voice to get transmitted there. So in that sense, actually what we want is small block size, something that moves very fast. So there's pros and cons for both of these and we have different requirements depending on the kind of data. So initially, we would say that the sports car, more IOPS. More IOPS is better, definitely, that's what we want. So you would say on paper, the sports car is better, but actually the data got there quicker using the lorry, less IOPS. And this goes back to what I say, you need to understand the data that you are going to put on the SAN to understand what the requirements are. Latency. So we've spoken about transfer rates and IOPS and block sizes, and we understand how these are all related to each other. The next thing to think about is latency. Different applications respond differently to latency. Typically, something like your SQL servers or your exchange type servers, you want to keep your latency below 10 milliseconds. And that's because they're requesting lots of small bits of information and they're doing them very quickly because they're serving 200 mailboxes. So they want to get that data as quick as possible. Now latency is measured in milliseconds. So one IOP to get processed in a second is 100 milliseconds. So if we have a hard disk and we say this hard disk is capable of producing one IOP, the latency for that hard disk will be 1000 milliseconds. Now in this demonstration, uh, the numbers are supposed to be relative. Uh, they're all far too slow for anything in real life. But let me show you. So this, in this scenario, we're actually gonna process six IOPS in one second. So this hard disk handles six IOPS a second and its latency is an average of 166 milliseconds. That's effectively the six divided by the thousand milliseconds in a second. You can do six in a second and because they're all evenly spread, 
that gives a latency of 166 milliseconds. What this is reliant on is the server never requesting data for the previous IOP has completed. In that example, I'll just show you here, the server requested some data, it was done, then it requested some more, and it was done, and then it was, and in this process, it's very linear. In reality, this is never going to happen. What actually is going to happen is the server's going to send its request within the second. So this is still doing six millisecond, six IOPS, but actually the data is having to queue to get served. As I said at the beginning, a second is a, lar a large amount of time. So what we can see in this table is actually the first packet arrived was still processed in 166 milliseconds, and that's fine. But while that one was being processed, the server had actually sent the next IOP along, and it was having to be queue, it was having to queue while that first one was getting processed. And ultimately, the last one that came along had to wait uh, 899 milliseconds. So we work this out now. This is actually 600 milliseconds that this uh, disk is capable of producing. So when we actually saturate it fully at six IOPS per second, we don't get the 166 milliseconds that we saw previously. We actually get a much larger value, average value of 600 milliseconds. And that's obviously not acceptable for our situation. So the question is, well, I know I need six IOPS, but actually I need much less latency. That's what my application my, my sizing for exchange says you need six IOPS, but you need a latency of 300 milliseconds. So how do we get around that? Well, what we do is we say to that disk, well, actually, if we halve, it may be capable of six IOPS, but actually we halve the number of IOPS we put through it, we can start to see that actually we bring our average latency time down to 300 milliseconds. So we've got our, our latency down to what we need, but we haven't got enough IOPS. So how can we solve this? Well, what we do is we add a second disk. So we've got two disks that are capable of doing six uh, IOPS. That's what the manufacturers told us. But the latency on those six, minis, uh, those six IOPS is way too high. So what we actually do is we split it out. We only put three IOPS through each disk and as much halving our latency. So as we can still see here, we're still sending the data through our data is still queuing, and we're still, although we've only put three packets of data through each one, we're getting a total of six IOPS, and what we can see here is that we've now achieved six IOPS, and we managed to get that through in 300 milliseconds. So, by increasing the number of disks, yes, we increase the number of IOPS, but if we need to reduce our latency, we might often need to increase the number of disks beyond what the manufacturer says is its peak IOP count to take into account the overall latency. Now, I keep on about where you need to know your workload, et cetera, et cetera. How do you know your workload? Well, what you need to do is on your servers, uh, whether they're already on VMware or they're physical, is you need to run performance counters and you need to run them against the servers for a length of time to understand currently what your IOPS are, what your latency are, and what your block sizes are. Once you have all this information and provided your servers are currently working efficiently, you can start to collate all this information together from your different servers to work out overall what you need from your SAN. Now there's obviously software out there that can do this all for you. Um, Plate Spin is a great application. Uh, you run this on the servers and it, it works, it collates all this information together and it works it out. However, I would strongly recommend that you still carry this out yourself so you can actually understand what each of these mean. Now we're going to do a practical demonstration to show exactly what I've been talking about. In this demonstration, what we're going to do is I'm going to copy a large file, one large file, and see what the result is in the performance counter. And then I'm going to move a folder that's got thousands of small files in. Now going back to what we've learned, if we move one large file 
Okay, we'd expect the latency to be high because we would expect there to be a large block size because it's more efficient to move this one large file with a large block size, high latency, low IOPS, but we'd see a large transfer size. And that we that would be the most efficient way to get that one large file across. And then when we're moving a the folder with all the small files in, we will expect this to be um, a lot lower latency, smaller block size, a lower transfer rate, so there's a higher IOP requirement. But what's going to happen, of course, with the smaller folder is its aim is to get those small files across as quickly as possible because we can start making use of those individual small files immediately, whereas the large file, we can't make any use of it until the whole thing's across. So now let's go to a practical demonstration and see whether this is correct. Okay, now we can put into practice uh, what we've been learning in the PowerPoint slides. I've got two files, one a very large single 5 gig file which represents a movie or some large graphic files and I've got a folder which contains around 40,000 small files which also equates to 5 gig. What we're going to do is we're going to copy them off a one drive to another and we're going to use performance monitor to look at various statistics. We're going to look at IOPS latency, block size um, and trans transfer rate. In order to do this, we're going to use a performance monitor on Windows 2008 server. And we're going to look at the performance monitor. We're going to change this to report and we're going to add our performance counters. Uh, for this, we're going to use the physical um, hard disk performance counter. Okay. And we need to copy across uh, average bytes for the drive disks okay so what we can see here is the top line is going to measure the block size this line this second right is going to measure our latency our bytes per second is our transfer rate and our writes per second is our IOPS. We select OK, we can see there is no activity on the E drive at the moment. So I'm now going to copy my large file across. Okay, that's going to start to copy. Okay, and we're going to pause the uh, the counter here. So what does this show us? We have got approximately IOPS of 2. We have got 400 millisecond uh, latency. And we have got a block size of approximately 35 meg per block. I should stress for block size, um, it's not particularly accurate. You wouldn't... Um, uh, this will be varying the whole time depending on the operating system and what else is going on. But it's an indicator um, and we can see that's an incredibly large block size. We're now going to repeat this using small files. To start it off back to zero. I'm just going to delete the files that are already on the system. And here we can see we've got a folder that is again approximately 5 gig, but it's got 38,000 files in there. I'm going to copy this, place this on the E drive. Okay. Right, we can go back to our performance monitor. Okay. I've just paused up there. Right, what we can see here is much higher levels of IOPS. We've got 91 IOPS. We've got a significantly smaller uh, latency down to 60 milliseconds. And we can see that we have got a block size um, of approximately uh, 169 kilobytes. Again, significantly smaller. 
So what this practical demonstration shows, what we've learned in theory, that we need to understand, understand the kind of traffic that's going across our network before we can size our SAN uh, correctly. Simply uh, getting a SAN that uh, has so many IOPS, a thousand, a million IOPS, isn't necessarily going to fit the needs we require. Uh, as we've seen, if we're working with big multimedia files, then we're not necessarily after a huge number of IOPS. I'm James Sillett and I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments or questions, you can contact me by any of the means shown below.